Hello, hello world, and welcome back to my channel. Please hit that subscribe button. Hit it if you like what you see, and if you don't, that's okay. Just watch and learn. Remember that the contents on this channel are based on comments, questions, or requests that I get from you guys, the viewers. <laughs> All right, so the question for today is, how can I test my code with Python's unit test framework and export the test results to a JUnit like XML report? Okay, so we're talking about test automation in this case, right? So I'm not gonna go into a lot of detail on this. Uh, unit test, and I believe unit test comes by default with any Python installation. So go to your terminal and do import unit test. And if it works, probably it's already there. If not, well, you know the deal, right? You use pip to install it, or if you want to install it in any other way, you can do it. But there you go. We have it. So this, this is a very powerful framework that would allow you to automate test cases. And this can be unit tests or it can be integration tests. It depends up on the tester or the coder or whoever is going to create this test. So I'm going to assume that uh, we're going to do this for kind of a very simple unit test. So the first thing that we have to do is let's create the code, the code that we need to test, right? We need something. So I'm going to call this one YouTuber. And I already created this code, so let me let me uh, look for it. Wait, where is it? Dun, 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 dun. It's right here. Okay, so you can see it's a very, very simple class called YouTuber with an init method. Uh, so when you initialize this one, or you create an instance of it, it will be uh, with a name and a, and a link. And then you can get the name, the channel, update so getters and setters right very very simple code for us to test okay so this is going to be the code that we want to test we want to make sure that when we initialize a youtuber it actually initializes correctly if not then it throws an exception or something like that now let's create another file this is going to be called test youtuber and this will be our uh, automated test. So first thing that we have to do for this one is we are going to start importing our packages. So the first thing is import unit test and then we need to import the class that we want to test, right? So in this case it's going to be from YouTuber import YouTuber. So this is the class. We're importing this class so that it's visible to our unit test. So now we're going to create our test YouTuber class, and this is going to extend test case. This is going to extend unit test, all right? That's how Python knows that this is going to be a test class and then it can run it. Okay, so let's think about what we can do here. Let, let's do two simple test cases, right? The first that come to mind is uh, when you try to create or instantiate a class without passing these values. So you're trying to create an empty YouTuber class. And then the other one where you actually pass these values and then you want to make sure that the values that you pass are actually set. Okay, so you can see there we have two test cases, a negative test case where we're expecting something bad to happen when you're not passing this. And then another one, kind of green path, where we pass these two links or this, this two arguments and then we get something out of it. Okay, so Let's define our first test and all the tests, all the automated test cases written under the unit test framework should start with test. If they don't start with test, then the framework doesn't know that they are tests, so it, they won't be executed automatically. So let's call this initialize, let's initialize class no arcs. Okay, so we go. So the way we're going to do that is in the unit test framework, we have a method called assert raises. And this is telling us that we're expecting an exception to be thrown, right? So in this particular case, we're going to, we're going to expect a type error exception. Why? Because we're going to try to create a YouTuber or instantiate a, new, a, a YouTuber with, without these values. So I'm going to use, again, the compound method wit. And then I'm going to say, try to do a YouTuber with no arguments, okay? So here the code is telling, try to create a YouTuber, pass no arguments. When this code happens, this with statement is going to get executed. And then we're gonna check that this should throw a type error exception. If it throws it, then the test is going to pass and it's going to be successful. 
If it doesn't, then the test will fail. And then we have a problem, right? Because this is getting, this is, this is passing without any, any arguments in it. All right, so that's the first test. The second one will be test initialize uh, class with args. And in this case, we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna say YouTuber, it's gonna be equal to YouTuber the class, and then we're gonna pass the name. The name's gonna be all things automated. And then a fictional channel name, right? Like, I don't know, HTTP, YouTube.com, all, all things automated, something like that. So here we're uh, creating an instance of this class and then passing this to, and then we're assigning that to this variable. All right, so now let's use a method in the framework called assert equals. And this is, let's assert, or let's try to compare two values. If those two values are the same, then pass. If they are not the same, then fail the test case. So in this case, I'm gonna say, all things automated, so this string should be the same that if I do YouTuber get name. Okay, so this is going to call this method. I mean, I'm initializing here, right? So if I call get name, it's going to return me whatever was said here. Okay, that's one. The next one is make sure that the same thing happens, but for the actual link. Okay, and what are we gonna call here? YouTuber get channel name. All right, so. I think that's it. I think that's how you create to use the unit test framework to create two uh, two test cases. Now let's run it, right? So if I right click here, you can see here that it says run no sys and I'm gonna run it. Oh, it's just because I don't have the nose model. Okay, okay, that's, that's a different thing, so sorry. So I'm gonna come to my console and then I'm gonna do Python. Wait, let's first see if I'm Okay, yes, I'm in the right directory. I have here my test and my other class. So we're gonna do Python, M for module. The module is gonna be unit test. And then we're gonna pass the name of the test class, or actually the test file without the PY uh, thing. So it's just going to be YouTuber. If I click on that one, whoa, really quick. It says it ran two tests in 0 0.000 seconds and both of them pass. Nice, that's, that's, uh, that's really good. So let's see, let's see how, what happens when something fails. Let's see that all things automated two right here and here we're gonna put two. This one should fail because this string won't be the same as this one. So if I run this, okay, it fails. You can see here the first dot, it's the first test, it passed. Then the second one, it's not a dot, it's an F saying that it fails and that it's telling me right here. Assertion error, all things automated too, it's not equal to all things automated. Cool, so this is working, working as expected. So there you go, that's how you create that. Now, the, there's the question also that it says, how can I export this results? Because you can see that this are printing to the standard output. How can I export this results into an XML JUnit like report sub, right? So I don't know if you guys have come from Java, if you have created JUnit test cases, you can see that those get reported in a really fancy XML file that then later you can use to create reports and graphs and all that fancy things. Okay, so in order to do that, it's, it's an easy fix. Uh, first, you have to import, I believe you have to import XML runner. XML runner. Again, if you don't have this, then pip install XML runner and that should do it. And this is, it is, what this thing is going to do, it's going to do the exact same thing, run it, but then report in an XML style. So I'm gonna do Python code here to uh, call main. So main, and what we're gonna uh, do here, it's, we're gonna say unit test main test runner, it's gonna be equal to XML runner, XML test runner, and then we should be able to provide an output, okay? And the output, I'm going to say, uh, just send it in the current directory, right? To a folder called results. 
Test results, something like that. Test results, okay. And then another option, and I think this are by default fail fast. I think you, you can live without this. I mean, let's let's not use those. Let's let's see if we can make it work like that. So there it is. This is that's what I'm doing here. We're just adding the XML runner to our main class. So now if I come here, I don't have to run it like this, right? Because it's Python. Here we are specifying the model that we're running. So now what I'm going to do is just going to call Python test youtuber.py. In this case, we need the name of the file uh, with all the extent and the extension. So if I call this, okay, it says that it run. Same thing. It failed because of this comparison. Generate an XML report. So now if I come to my project, I see this folder. If I open this one, you can see here that this is the XML results like page that we wanted. It's telling me it failed, that we have one error, zero failures. We run two tests and these are the ones that fail. Okay, so let's go back and actually change this so that the test case passes. So what about if I run it now? Okay, now it's telling me running tests. We run two. Generating the report, you can see that there's another file generated because it's keeping track of all the runs that you're doing right here. So if we do this, okay, this time no errors, no failures, two tests run, and these are the, the, uh, the name of the test cases and from which class it's coming. Okay, so that's it, guys. That's how you create an automated test case for this simple, very simple test class. Two simple test cases right here. You can create more tests. Like make sure that when you call the update name that it's actually updating the name the way it's supposed to be and that's how you test it and that's how you automatically run it right and then later you can use this along with other you know continuous integration tools like Jenkins or Travis CI or stuff like that and then your test cases will run automatically and do pretty reports for you okay so that's it hope this answered your questions and thanks for visiting my channel guys see you next time